follow the Sports Club on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Welcome back to the Sports Coma with Big Q and the guy. We're talking about the Saints minicamp news. DC broke it down for us in the first segment of the show. This time around, we're going to delve into a little bit more uh, more different issues pertaining to Mr. Terrence West and his, uh, his impact, if any, if he can actually do what we think he could do in those first four weeks as Mark Ingram in trouble. We'll answer that question. But first, before we get into that, uh, DC wants to know about the DeMarco Murray declining uh, to come uh, to train out for the Saints and what, what my thoughts on it. Of course, if everybody knew who I think, they're going to know what I'm going to say, but I'm just going to say it anyway. I think DeMarco Murray has a very high opinion of himself. Uh, I don't think DeMarco, I think DeMarco Murray needs to understand that uh, he has not, he, he's a guy that had an opportunity and he probably would end up you, you you he probably would end up getting signed by the Saints, and probably could have been having a pretty decent time here. But the fact of the matter, Demarco Murray is no way, shape, form, and fashion what he used to be. I mean, he's he, I mean for the last couple of years he's been injured, injury riddled. I mean, it's I, I just don't understand why the hell you wouldn't want to accept an invitation to come and try out for the Saints when they had way more productive backs than you. Jamal Charles was a guy. Who can I guess you could say Jamal Charles was a guy that had very good production over his years and could do a little bit real, right and do and can do a lot more things that he can't do. Jamal Charles can actually uh, catch balls out the backfield. He's more of a complete back than a Demarco Murray. Demarco so he might be able to catch it, but he can't do what Jamal Charles do. He can't catch him like Jamal Charles do. So the bottom well, line I, is. I Go ahead, I'm sorry. So Jamal, that's my, I think, DeMarco Murray. And it's good to have a high opinion in itself, but it's also to be realistic as well. And I think he just made a huge blunder by not taking an opportunity to try for the Saints because truth be told, he could have possibly, he might end up actually getting a contract out of the deal. But, you know, that's that's how the buck, that's that's a decision that he'll never know being that uh, he gave it up. So who knows how, it, it, you know, but I don't see anything going forward from him. Tim Hightower came down here and tried it out. Uh, Jamal Charles tried out the Saints, obviously went with Mr. Terrence West. And, D.C., let's kind of cruise right into Terrence West and talk about what Terrence West could bring to the team. We know Terrence – I want to comment on DeMarco Murray, though. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Gave you, gave me some go ahead. But uh, what came to my mind was uh, a song from a long time ago, probably pre-Katrina from a New Orleans native called BG. <laughs> and in this song, he said, what's your heart beating for? You scared. That's, I, that's, 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 that's just what I feel because when I think about it and uh, when you were talking, I thought about Henry. He lost his job to a dynamic second-year player in Henry that was pressing him for his job last year. And um, we got Alvin Kamara over here. I don't think he wanted no parts of that, man. I think he, he, he had a little flashback going on. He, he didn't want to try out with nobody else because he really didn't want to come here, man. Uh I think the situation in, in itself is not something he ready for. He want to go somewhere where he ain't got no threats. Uh, that's what I thought about after hearing your commentary, of course. Because uh, before that, I, I just was like, I, I don't get it. Like, why not come to the Saints, man? You can make starter money, splitting reps, extend your career. And, you know, basically, you possibly could get into the Pro Bowl. We got two running backs starting in the Pro Bowl. That could be you. Mr. Murray don't see it that way. He wants the whole – he don't want to share anything. He wants the whole situation to himself, and that's fine. He just uh, – well, perhaps good he luck never, with that. Good luck Last with that time indeed. I you look like Le'Veon Bell or uh, David Johnson. So. Right, exactly. Good luck with that. <laughs> good luck with that one. But anyway, uh, let me let me hit you with some of our releases before we get into our Terrence West uh, breakdown. Um, a couple of releases the Saints did to bring in Trevor Darling, the big offensive lineman from – the Miami Hurricanes, and Josh Smith, the wide receiver from Tennessee Falls. They did release D.C.'s favorite fullback, Ryan Juracek, and offensive lineman Corey Helms, who came from Tennessee. So um, that's a couple of the releases to bring a couple of those guys on aboard. Now, D.C., let's get to the Terrence West news. We talked about Terrence West early in the podcast, 
And I was look had an opportunity to look at some stats from Mr. West. And uh the guy is is, is a it's a nice size back. You know, he's uh, he's about the same almost the same he's about the same statue stature as uh Mr. Mark Ingram. And if you look at one of his last and his best season, because he was injured in 2017, but the season before that in 2016, DC, he played 16 games, had 193 carries for 774 yards. He averaged four yards a carry, and he had five touchdown rushing touchdowns in that year. Also, his receiving stats through those 16 games in 2016, he had 34 catches uh, for 236 yards. And one touchdown. He averaged seven yards a catch in 2016. And prior to that, uh, his best season was his rookie year out of Cleveland when he ran for 673 yards and four touchdowns. His career numbers over five years. He's a third round pick by the Cleveland Browns out of Tolson uh, back in 2014. So he's been in the league about five years now. And his right. career stats is 43. He has played in 43 games. He's had 465 rushing attempts for 1,816 yards with 11 rushing touchdowns. That's his rushing stats. DC 51 catches uh, for 344 yards and two touchdowns is his receiving stats. Now, the question I pose to you, DC, is is, is very blunt and simple, and I'm going to give you all the time to, to elaborate. If Terrence West, which I looked at his highlight film by your direction, the guy is is like a Mark Ingram clone, not to steal your thunder. But <laughs> let me ask you this. If this guy cuts up in the first four weeks of the season, what does is Mark Ingram in trouble? Hell yeah. Mark Ingram could possibly see himself uh, looking like the Adrian Peterson of this year. Uh, there's one thing we know. The Saints hate any type of distractions. Um. You had Kenny Vaccaro got suspended for Adderall. Out of here. Adrian Peterson kind of sort of looked like he was causing dis- dis- uh, disruption. Out of here. And you can follow the laundry list of guys that actually, I felt like uh, Jonathan Vilma and some of these other players that that got penalized uh, during the Bounty Gate scandal. And they may very well have not even did anything wrong. But guess what? They all were out of here. So, uh, Mark Ingram, I don't, I definitely don't see him bucking that trend. If Terrence West comes out there and looks like anything remotely close to him, uh, if Terrence West comes out in these four games, let's say he averages 60, 70 yards a game, and he gives you three or four touchdowns out of them four games, not looking too good for Mark Ingram. Not looking good for Ingram at all. I have to agree with you on that, my friend. I think that if, if West comes out and a lot of people say, man, you're crazy. We love Mark Ingram. Yo, you listen, that's sentimental attachment, yo. This is, remember, yeah. football is a business. They don't say now. we hate Mark Ingram. Like, we don't like Mark Ingram. Right. And, but I, <laughs> that's the same thing I keep saying. People, when we said the whole thing about Darius Geis, remember, we the one that started all that about Darius Geis when we started talking I, about It looked like we should have we uh, drafted Darius Geis. You should have gave up a second round draft pick or something from the next year. We should have went got Darius Geis. It, it probably wouldn't be having this conversation right now. Would not be having this conversation at all because you pair Darius Geis with Elvin Kamara, and that we, well, I don't even have to go that way because uh, that's just that's something we said. But we knew five, six, seven years. Man. But that goes to show you that we, like we've been doing for the last few years, we've been running right ahead of the curb when we talk about these issues. Because how ironic it is, we talk about getting Darius Geis to replace Mark Ingram, and then all this stuff jump off for Mark Ingram right after Darius Geis, but they knew. And they could have pulled the, the, the plug on it. But we we didn't know what they knew, but we knew deep down inside that we needed to make well, a move on that. I think they had their eyes on Boston Scott. And I think that's also, we always have a player uh, every couple of years or so that just come out of nowhere like gangbusters, like Alvin Kamari. Uh, Sean Payton loves running backs, always has. So I think Boston Scott, Maybe they were a little more intrigued by what he can do all around. And so they, they elected not to give up a commodity next year for Darius Geis. But I know Darius Geis definitely had to be on the board. No doubt about it, D.C. Very good analysis, my friend. Uh, let's move into our next subject of discussion. Remember Davenport? Let's talk about Marcus Davenport. He had that thumb surgery. Now, of course, um, 
he said it wasn't nothing to worry about. It was very minuscule or whatnot. And when we seen him, we seen it, uh, his his hand in the cast, his thumb was wrapped up, very minor surgery, saying to replace the thumb. Didn't get much information about where, how he hurt his thumb or whatnot. But of course, he's saying that it won't uh, stop him going forward or stop him from attending camps or whatnot. So he was, of course, in the mini camp. You can see his thumb was wrapped up and everything. But that's just a little word of caution on Mr. Davenport to make mention of that surgery as he described it as very minor surgery. Nothing to be worried about, nothing to be concerned about. DC, we got about a little less than three minutes left to go in this segment. Talk to me about the Saints. They had some guys went into the Saints Hall of Fame. A friend, you want to break that down? Well, you, you, you didn't throw a curveball on me. I thought I was about to say something about Davenport. <laughs> oh, you, me, uh, you want to add something to Davenport? Go right on ahead, my friend. Well, yeah. I mean, uh, from what I heard about the injury and, and looking at training camp, he was still out there getting work in. Right. And his, and his finger is tore up. So, to me, I, w- I would say it definitely can't be that serious. If he was still out there um, going through all the team practice without any, you know, pretty much any side effects. So, I think he's definitely going to come on out the other end of that. It ain't going to be no big deal. But moving on to the Saints Hall of Famers, new Saints Hall of Famers, Pierre Thomas. And Lance Moore, man, a uh, long time coming for these dudes, man. I, th- I think that is a very classy move. And I couldn't think of a better offseason to do it, um, knowing that the Saints could be possibly in the Super Bowl this year with the team that they've assembled. So um, these guys, respectively, 40 and 39 touchdowns in their career each, um, it, was, it was a staple and a very – prominent foundation in us winning the Super Bowl. I don't know if everybody uh, remembers in the Saints Nation that both of these guys are undrafted. And they came and both of them, man, I mean, similar production from both of these guys. And they, they both had a similar impact, different areas on the team. But without them, I could really say we probably wouldn't have won that Super Bowl. We needed them just as much as say uh a Reggie Bush who was in the first round draft pick, you know. So I'm I'm glad to see those guys get inducted in, man. And I think it's a beautiful day for them. So they'll be at Championship Square. We're gonna see them up there. Big ups to Lance Moore and Mr. Pierre Thomas, man, for doing it big for all those years and their great contributions to New Orleans Saints, and especially uh helping to obtain our first and not and uh first Super Bowl here now let's get into the injury news right before we get up out of here uh we got a few things to mention on the injury situation uh andrews pete cam meredith and alex okafor all are going to be ready uh for when a big meat and potato action start uh so a lot of people have been keeping an eye on them so that's right cross your fingers now cross your fingers now so we so so we all on schedule cam cam meredith is beyond schedule so we you know, I am, I'm not even concerned. But so we got a lot of uh, insurance on uh, with the pass rushers as far as Dav, uh, with uh, Alex Okafor as Davenport's a bunch of guys as well to kind of fill in on that side of things. And Andrews Pete is the real issue. A lot of people looking at Andrews Pete hoping he can come back 100% as well. So that's going to do it for the show here. You're trying real hard to be ready, yeah, man. Oh, yeah, we definitely need Andrew Steph. But this will do it for the show. We appreciate y'all guys for chiming in tonight on the Sports Coma, episode 201 on the Coma. Thank y'all for joining us today. As always, if you enjoyed the show, please hit the notification, share, like, and, and, and remember sharing is caring here at the Sports Coma. So you can make sure you share the Sports Coma with your friends and family members and other who that's across the who that nation say listen man we like these guys so much here listen to them and stop listening to them old boring lame guys out there but uh, also if you also support the platform please feel free to donate at the Patreon page at www.patreon.com slash the P-R-O Media Network and make a donation to help us out to build a platform as well and also thank you for joining us tonight on Sports Coma from me in D.C. Peace. Hey.
forget ESPN or Fox. Get straight sports talk from the sports coma with Big Q and the guys. Oh. 